good morning and welcome you all to this session on conduction and convection heat transfer now in this session we will start a new topic extended surfaces and film you have seen in several cases practical uh, scenario we use an extended surface for example in a wall hot wall if you have to enhance the heat transfer we add some extended surfaces you will see in many places the radiators of a car in heat exchangers if you see the two fluids exchange heat between each other one is hot another is cold and they pass through different passages one is for example in a sealant tube heat exchanger on the inside tube another is the outside annular area and you often see that to enhance the heat transfer there are extended surfaces attached to the inside tube to enhance the heat transfer there so <coughs> several applications are there in buildings you will see the fins are there to enhance the rate of heat transfer at the outside wall now the basic principle of using extended surfaces which are known as fins to enhance the heat transfer depends upon again the fourier law whole lifetime the entire study of heat transfer i tell you those of you who may make career in heat transfer will remember this depend that the pivotal point is the fourier heat conduction law which is used in convection heat transfer also that is heat flux total heat transfer rate is k thermal conductivity times the area times the temperature gradient so we can increase the heat transfer rate by increasing the thermal conductivity of the fluid or the solid <coughs> that is a property we can increase the heat transfer rate again by increasing the area that is the geometry more is the area more is the heat transfer you know that when you want to cool <coughs> hot tea sometimes we pour it on a <coughs> flat plate where it get more surface area cold being rate of heat transfer <coughs> is in hand the third one is the dt dx or dt dr temperature gradient now one is the property another is the geometry and dt dr is the <coughs> temperature gradient that depends upon the boundary condition and geometry for conduction and for convection heat transfer this dt dr depends upon the flow condition which will be <coughs> dealt in more details in the convection class and the example of that is again first we pour the tea on the plate but still we are not satisfied then we try to blow air over it or put it in the bottom of a fan that means in that case we create a higher temperature gradient we don't touch area we don't touch the property what do we touch change the flow field as i explained earlier <coughs> temperature gradient so therefore in heat transfer this has to be remembered for whole life that these three parameters scientists start searching that these three parameters have to be dealt to it to change the heat transfer rate now in extended surface or fin are used to increase <coughs> the heat transfer rate by increasing more surface area how it is done let us consider a wall this surface of the wall we are not interested what happens this side of the wall just i have drawn the figure for your understanding the problem is posed that this is the outer surface of the wall this surface which is kept at a temperature tb the nomenclature b is used that is base base temperature that means from this wall and this wall is exposed to an ambient t infinity it is a hot wall this may be considered that something is generated here in terms of energy <coughs> it may be the outer wall of a building where too much energy is generated because of some action huge people are there making noise making some functions and all these things so that 
this become thought or it may be the wall of a furnace where this energy is generated these are the practical examples that we get a hot exposed wall this surface of the wall at some high temperature tb which is greater than t infinity now immediately one person will tell okay then you have a heat transfer q i tell you it is h if you prescribe h as heat transfer coefficient which is again a very complicated thing you will see how complicated it is but it's a fun when we will deal with convection but at present we are happy that h is given as a parameter which is constant then uh, people will tell if a is your <coughs> surface area of this <coughs> wall then fine you have this heat transfer are you happy no i am not satisfied with this heat transfer rate but it is fixed i cannot change the flow field is such of the outside air i, I am not, i cannot do so what you can do i cannot change the t infinity the ambient temperature then i have to set another refrigerant or air conditioner plant conditioning plant to reduce the temperature so this you have to accept okay i will enhance the heat transfer rate by enhancing my area how wall is fixed how you will increase the area how can i increase the outer wall area so what i do i add a additional surface like this in a plane geometry for simple understanding now let us consider this part of the wall i attach a <coughs> rectangular surface like this a three dimensional view my drawing is not that good i think you can understand it so i add this surface with a high thermal conductivity it is not insulating material it's a thermal conductivity high k let k is the thermal conductivity which is very important of this now what happens actually by adding this if i tell that it provides additional area for heat transfer it is understood how now when heat is flowing from this area now this unexposed area remains same they behave as the same thing h into a t b minus t into a is this area plus this area so this area let us now consider h it is very important i am telling you few books i don't know explain this way they simply write by providing more surface area but how you have to understand surface area is being provided at the cost of what we are providing the surface area you please come to the first bench you hello you yes you are next to you you yes hello you yes come and sit here not you in front of you yes come and sit here please so now a thermal conductivity k now what happens if this is the height h and if i consider this width for understanding is our b then from this part we have a heat transfer tb minus t infinity h into b into tb minus t infinity try to understand this this is very important i tell you but the first part of the deductions this may not be important but to understand the field efficiency it is very important now you can tell sir i am generating the same area h into b here so why you are bothered so much i am generating the same area but you are adding materials that means a thermal resistance what does it do that this exposed area hb is not at a temperature tb because there is a temperature drop that's why we tell this is a thermal resistance that if you add more material and take the surface area somewhere here in the direction of heat flow means the temperature drop is there until and unless thermal conductivity is infinity less is the thermal conductivity more is the temperature of this way we realize that there is a reduction in the heat transfer rate that means adding this 
material reduces the heat loss from this part of the pipe, a uh, surface where it is attached, but does not matter. Each and every portion the heat is being transmitted in this direction, in this direction. Why? This is because we have a temperature gradient from T B to T infinity. So, each portion each at each length, if we consider this as the distance x and let this be the length of this from here actually, this length, this is an isometric view, this length L. So, along the length, you have a temperature drop from T b to some temperature here, but this is relatively higher, but lower than T b. So, at each and every point, even if the temperature is lower than the base temperature, but it exchanges heat to the surrounding because of the huge surface area. Let us consider a section here at a distance x. I draw a simple two dimensional surface like this, then it will be easier for us to understand that let us consider at a distance x, at a distance x we take an element of length del x and heat is conducted from the base which is at a temperature T b. From here it is conducted at this position let q x is the heat coming in. Then there is heat transfer through the surfaces of this element and rest part of the heat is being conducted. That means, this heat transfer through these lateral surfaces is huge. Because of this, it draws more heat here. Finally, it is connected to here. That means, from the base, it draws more heat. That means, what are those lateral surfaces? That means, this one. I draw it here. This del x, you can understand this like this. That means, I think you can see it that means, this lateral surfaces one is the top surface, another is the bottom surface. That means, del x into b top and bottom, then this surface that del x into h, del x into h. So, you see there are four surfaces from which it transfers heat by convection. Here, if you cannot guess it from this three dimensional drawing that this surface, this surface top and the bottom, that means one is this top surface perpendicular to this direction, that means this top surface, this one that is B times delta x. Similarly, the bottom one B times delta x from the bottom surface delta x and width in this direction perpendicular to the plane of the board. And also this surface that is this one whose h into delta x this area and the rear one that means it has this open or exposed surface to the ambient which transfers heat and it has some temperature T at distance x which is less than T b because of the thermal conductivity of this material that I accept it is not at T b, but even in that less temperature it has huge area to transfer a huge amount of heat 
and this so it is added up for the entire pin so that it helps to draw more heat from the base than that was being transferred without the attachment of this extended surface which is known as pin this is a rectangular pin clear to everybody that how then the pin works that it puts an additional thermal resistance in conduction along the direction of flow but it gives huge heat transfer by convection by allowing a lateral more lateral surface which are even less being even less being even less than the base temperature but transfers a huge amount of it because of its surface area so now if this be the problem which we have understood the next part becomes so simple that why not we then find out the conservation of energy principle no thermal energy generation one rectangular pin if you consider let this is q convection from the lateral surfaces then q x which is coming is distributed as q convection plus q x plus del x clear now q x is minus k a x d t d x what is a x a x is the surface area here here you can say that it is uniform but i take a variable area let us consider a variable area let us consider a variable area i have shown you here a area which is uh, straight but we can consider a variable area now for general purpose but ultimately we will be solving this this is a variable area this is a variable area okay so this is qx this is ax at a distance x then this is qx plus del x and here this is del x very simple here a ax is a function of x i am not writing ax plus del x not necessary then q convection that is the heat rate transfer so that's why minus kx dt dx now if you solve this by expanding taylor series and take it here then q x plus del x is q x plus del d d x of q x d x that means minus k take all sorts of q x plus q d d x of q x del x plus q convection what is q convection now q convection can be written like this we can now rub this one we will go by that now q convection can be expressed as this if you define a perimeter p for example here you can understand better the perimeter in this case is the perimeter of this surface that means here p plus h plus b plus h to b plus h so therefore if you consider p as the perimeter of this lateral surface which is perpendicular to the plane of the board then q convection can be written as area 
h times the area area becomes the perimeter into delta x in terms of perimeter it is perimeter into delta x into t minus t is the temperature there at that location x t is the temperature so in terms of the nomenclature perimeter i can write this equation as h p delta x t minus t infinity so therefore i can write the equations in this fashion that ddx ddx of k a x dt dx minus h into p delta x you are very very good delta x i am sorry there will be delta x so hp into t minus t infinity very good there should be delta x yes because this is qx plus del x is qx plus ddx of qx into delta x neglecting the higher order term very good so that delta x get cancelled now this is the temperature distribution equation difference is that here heat is transferred simultaneously for each and every element both by conduction and conduction through lateral surfaces which so far we did not consider so that means it precisely boils down to a conduction problem where lateral surfaces at each and every section of the conducting material along the length of the heat flow shares in the convective heat transfer okay that is the only difference so therefore if we know the physics then we can find out the basic governing differential equation for the temperature distribution let us consider a very simple case constant thermal conductivity no temperature dependence and a this type of rectangular fin that means a is constant then we get a very simple equation d square t dx square minus h p by k a t minus t infinity is okay now if we write by transforming the variable dependent variable temperature as in the form of excess temperature that means i change the temperature variable t transformation t minus t infinity as heat as the variable that means it is the temperature over the ambient temperature then dt dx is d theta dx d square t dx square is d square theta dx square but the advantage is there here only we get theta that means this looks like a simple full level problem that d square by defining this and by defining m as root over h p by k a m is a parameter which is just defined by root over h p by k a h p by k a is the m okay if you define m as root over h p by k a then we get an expression d square theta dx square minus m square theta equal to g if we define m as a dimensional parameter then we get an expression d square theta dx square minus m square theta g whose solution is very simple now we define this as square root or rather m square is hp by k this is because h p k all are positive okay so m is a real quantity that means h p by k can be expressed as a square of a real number m square m is a real number because h p k cannot become negative that's the logic otherwise we cannot define just square root of something 
as a real number you have to investigate whether this is positive or not so if we do so rest part the solution of this complementary function you find out there is no particular integral that side is zero this is a second order derivative uh, differential equation it is an exponential solution e to the power mx plus c2 e to the power minus hyperbolic function c1 exponential function whatever you call e to the power mx that's all now the boundary condition okay now the boundary condition what are the boundary condition tell me now boundary conditions then you ask me sir how do i know the governing differential equation eco differential equation comes from the principle of conservation of energy or anywhere principles of conservation principle and the boundary conditions come from the physical problem defined with it boundary and other conditions that means the boundary conditions have to be physically defined one boundary condition that depend that is defined or prescribed by the physics is that base temperature is cb where from x is measured so therefore at x is equal to 0 t is equal to cb which means theta is equal to theta b theta b means theta b means cb minus c into that means theta in terms of theta it is theta b what is another boundary condition another boundary for another boundary condition you have to search for another boundary condition with respect to x that means we have to find out what is the boundary condition at x is equal to l if l is the length of the pin you have to know whether it is insulated or something else so one very simple case there are various cases one case very long pin sometimes in problem we tell that pin is very long very long pin engineers are always smart they always take an approximation they don't go like mathematician very long means consider x tends to infinity that is means that means the very long pin and if x is very long tends to infinity then eventually the telling surface the extreme end of the pin will attain the environment temperature very good so this <coughs> boundary condition is that at as it is written as x tends to infinity t tends to obviously this is mathematics t infinity and theta tends to zero this is the simple one so first boundary condition gives you theta b is c1 plus c now in this case if you consider a very long pin so automatically you see c1 is zero because if you make this x tends to infinity this term vanishes and if theta is zero means c1 is zero that means the solution is that theta by theta b is e to the power minus mx that means there is an exponential decay of temperature towards zero very simple that means if you draw this graph exponential sorry i will show this thing afterwards theta by theta b is e to the power minus mx at x tends to infinity theta tends to 0 so what is the value of q now q means what what is q try to understand q at every section changing what happens again try to understand this this surface is transfer heat that means that any section that heat which is coming in is getting transferred by convection from the lateral surface and the rest part is being conducted 
that means the heat conduction through this is getting reduced that means the heat which is taking from the base extracting from the base by the fin is almost given to the atmosphere by its lateral surface due to convection and a very less amount is being convected from this surface and in a long fin the entire heat which is takes from the base is being convected by the lateral surface because when it reaches this surface exposed to the atmosphere at the extreme end it has reached almost t infinity because t tends to t infinity no heat transfer heat transfer is zero h delta t delta t is zero however this is the concept we will go by mathematics we are interested at q x is equal to zero what is the heat transfer from the base engineers are interested baba bol do heat transfer kitna hai from base i have attached a pin what is my heat transfer rate from the base that means how much heat it is extracting from the base okay i will tell you very simple minus k area dt ds this area now i am using as the area of the fin earlier when i talk to you to introduce the problem i told this is the area of the wall a but now whenever i am using area a this is for the cross sectional area of the fin in the equations also i derive that don't get confused with this area so this is the cross sectional area of the fin and in this problem we are considering a rectangular fin having con con constant cross sectional area so therefore this is the cross sectional area a so therefore minus ka and dt dx at x is equal to 0 so what is dt dx at x is equal to 0 theta by theta b means i write here t minus t infinity divided by tb in terms of temperature decoding the variable transform variable into the actual temperature is e to the power minus mx so therefore it is very simple that dt dx is equal to minus m T B minus T infinity e to the power minus m x, and that x is equal to zero. The exponential function will be one, so it will be minus m T B minus 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 will plus. That is K A m into T B minus T infinity. Now m is root over h P by K A. I defined earlier. again i write m was defined as was defined as root over h p by k a and if we put that then q at x is equal to 0 becomes root over h p k a into t b minus t infinity which can be written as theta so this is the it transfer from the base and this is the temperature distribution you don't have to mark any formula but you have to know how it is being derived again and again i am telling you you have to be capable of generating the governing differential equation by taking an element with the understanding physical understanding of the conservation of energy balance what is happening something is coming it will go whether generation inside whether there is a lateral convection all together you have to develop the basic equation and then slowly you have to think that which are constant given in the problem or everything is varying then it becomes a problem of mathematics how complicated it will be and if you do it meticulously you will arrive at any equation in the examination also if any problem is there we have to derive the equation So you don't mug up that theta by theta b to the power minus m x q is equal to root over h p k theta b for a long fin not required. But sequentially, how the deduction is made, understand the problem, both physics and the mathematics. Now the second group, second boundary condition is.
Now the second boundary condition is another type of pin. Second boundary condition means another type of pin we may consider not long pin, finite length, finite length of pin. finite length of pin, let it be L, but insulated tip, insulated tip, insulated tip, that means tip is insulated, insulating material is pasted on it, that means no heat will be transferred. So, this boundary condition is common to all, base temperature T B. So, what is the second boundary condition in this case, please tell, at x is equal to L, what is the boundary condition? It is insulated H. But in which form the boundary condition will come? If it is insulated, means no heat transfer. Please, anybody? Flux zero means terms of. I have to solve the temperature equation. DTDX zero. Who has told it? Uh, DTDX is zero. You tell that because I have to solve the. I have to solve which equation? Theta is C one e to the power m x plus C 2 e to the power minus m. I have to solve this equation. Let me write this here. So, I have to generate from, you are correct, you are also correct, but ultimately you have to translate in this form, because I have to solve this C 1 C 2. Theta is C 1 e to the power m x plus C 2 e to the power minus m x and one condition is that theta b at x is equal to 0, that means theta b is c 1 plus c 2. So, another condition is heat transfer 0, heat flux 0 means minus k d t d x is 0, that means d t d x is 0, that means d t d x at x is equal to L is 0. What is that? That means 0 is equal to d t d x 0 means d theta d x is 0. Same thing, because theta is t minus t infinity, 0 is m c 1 e to the power m l minus m c 2 e to the power 1. If you solve it, you will get c 1 is equal to e to the power minus m l by e to the power m l plus e to the power minus m l and you will get c 2 is e to the power m l divided by e to the power m l plus e to the power minus m l. And if you substitute this for the second case, you get the expression theta by theta b in terms of hyperbolic function cos hyperbolic m l minus x, this is the argument divided by cos hyperbolic m l. You know the hyperbolic function that cos hyperbolic x is equal to exponential x plus exponential minus x by 2. Okay? So, this is the final expression. Now, it becomes a routine job. Only thing is that you have to write the boundary condition correctly. Then, things are done. Now, third category of problem is pin of finite length L, but no insulation. This is the most practical problem. These are not bad. Long pin means what? 
what how much long how do you take that t is t infinity t may be very low if there is a huge drop from t b depends upon thermal conductivity also now insulated sometimes the fin surfaces may not be insulated and even with insulation there may be heat loss so the third one is the most practical condition that spin of finite length spin of finite length l but with convective heat loss with convective heat loss with convective heat loss at the tip what is meant by that that means at x is equal to l what do we have this is a conjugate heat transfer problem k dt dx at l per unit area i am writing or you can write the area minus k into area that means the heat which is coming to this surface by conduction minus k dt dx k dt dx which we did earlier combined conduction convection problem in series the same heat is being transferred to the h into area into t minus t at l t l minus that means t l is the temperature at l so if you can understand this and correctly write this then things are okay that means minus k dt dx at x is equal to l must be equal to h into t l minus t l means t at this is clear to everybody that means this is the conduction heat at the tip which is being conducted that is lost i told you that ultimately what is happening if you go on dividing into number of elements each element this takes heat some is going by lateral surface then some is going by lateral surface then it is conducted next so this way the conduction heat transfer is getting reduced when it come here most of the heat which has been taken from the base has been convected by the lateral surface so the rest part of the heat which is conducted finally to the extreme exposed surface is being lost to the surrounding ambient by convection from this part of the exposed surface this is the same area because we are considering the constant area rectangular spin so with this thing this concept in mind one can write the differential i uh, sorry boundary condition b clear step 2 is now convert this boundary condition in terms of our uh, theta and all this thing how to do it now dt dx means d theta dx that means minus k dt dx means d theta dx that means i can write now this as d theta dx and this as theta l in my nomenclature because my equation is in terms of the transformed variable theta that is excess temperature theta l <coughs> now what is minus k d theta dx that what is d theta dx c1 e to the power ml minus mc2 e to the power minus m. h into theta l that is c1 e to the power ml plus c2 e to the power minus no this side c1 mc1 yes m mc1 this side is simply c1 
sorry, mc1, d theta dx is mc1 e to the power ml plus mc2 e to the power minus. So, this is another equation. You can rearrange it some coefficient into c1 plus some another coefficient c2 equals to something. That means, these are two equations for c1, c2 in terms of m and l. And if you substitute this, then you get a solution like this. You get a solution like this. Now, I will write it here. This is not working. Now, you get a solution like this theta by theta b. Now, earlier case we got a solution theta by theta b is cos hyperbolic m l minus h that is earlier case insulated tip divided by cos hyperbolic m l. Now, I got get a solution theta by theta b for this third case this is the second case, this is the third case, theta by theta b is cos hyperbolic m l minus x plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. This is a routine matter, but tedious job to find out the expression. It is a rearrangement thing. That means, you have to find out c 1, c 2 and then you can find it. Other two things I have forgotten to tell you that even in the earlier case, this is insulating tip, this one of finite length L. Difference is that this is non-insulating tip of finite length L, which transfers heat with the ambient in terms of convection, where H is the convection coefficient. Okay? Now, what is the heat transfer? Earlier, I did it for long fin, Q at x is equal to 0 is equal to minus k a d t d x at x is equal to 0. Now, if you do it from here, what is d t d x? This theta by theta b means t minus theta is t minus t infinity, theta b is t b minus t infinity. So, if you do it, then you get it is equal to minus k a t minus t infinity. So, therefore, t b minus t infinity into cos hyperbolic m l minus x that is sin hyperbolic m l minus x with a minus sign and cos hyperbolic m l at x is equal to 0 tan hyperbolic m l that means minus tan hyperbolic m l. That means, this becomes is equal to k a sorry m, m will be there m, m tan hyperbolic m l T b minus T infinity. And we recall that m is root over h p by k a. 
so it is root of r h p a a tan hyperbolic m l into theta b this is an expression now this becomes all routine task it is root over h p k a tan hyperbolic m l into theta b this is the heat flux at x is equal to 0 similar you can find out the heat flux expression for this it is a lengthy expression that i can tell you you can see in the book also for this case number 3 the heat flux at x is equal to 0 will be let me see that it is difficult that which function will come with insulated pin tip sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l that means it will be sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k this is very tedious i know also boring but you have to afford to do this because without this it is not complete concept is very interesting that how the pin enhances the heat transfer then by govern setting up the governing differential equation you have to solve it with the boundary condition and for more practical cases the boundary conditions are such things are little complicated so complicated means tedious in equation in solving the thing so that finally we solve for temperature distribution in terms of the excess temperature and the heat transfer from the base which is enhanced and temperature distribution heat transfer from the base for different cases so these three cases are most important boundary conditions another boundary condition is there that fin is of finite length and its end surface is kept at a temperature tl that means tl is specified so everything has to be found in terms of tl that is given as a task for you to do it then we will be solving few problems on this fins extended surfaces so that we know that how we can apply our knowledge that means these equations which we have derived along with our knowledge to those practical problems in the next class and i will finally give you a generalized approach mathematical approach for any one dimensional steady heat conduction problem which will act as a fin which will act as a simple geometry without extended surface lateral surface all those things combined so therefore next class we will be most probably the concluding class for the one dimensional steady state heat conduction i will be solving few problems and then we will start the two dimensional heat conduction steady state and then we will go for unsteady heat conduction okay so next class means tomorrow okay thank you